This is Tom Fox. I'd like to welcome you to the Compliance Week 2022 podcast series. Compliance Week is thrilled to be back 100% live and in person after three years apart. Back for its 17th year at Compliance Week National 2022, compliance, ethics, legal, and audit professionals will gain insights and make connections at the industry's premier cross-industry national compliance event offering knowledge, packed, accredited sessions, and take-home advice from the most influential leaders in the compliance community. In this podcast series, we will detail some of the speakers and what they will be discussing at the event and why they are attending Compliance Week 2022. I hope you will join me in attending this conference and particularly this year when it's literally the first major compliance conference which will be held live since the pandemic began. We link to the conference in the show notes and listeners to this podcast get a special discount which is also listed in the show notes. I hope to see you in May at Compliance Week 2022. In this episode, I visit with Matthew Friedman, Chief Executive Officer of the Mekong Club and the author of Where Were You? A Profile on Modern Slavery. We discuss his session, The Human Factor of ESG. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back for another episode of one of our speakers from Compliance Week 2022. And today I'm thrilled to have back with me for another podcast, albeit a short one, Matt Friedman. So, Matt, first of all, uh, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I'm thrilled to be here. Matt, could you uh, uh, tell our audience what your current role is? I'm the CEO of an organization called the Mekong Club. The Mekong Club basically works with the private sector in a positive, supportive way to help them to understand the issue of human trafficking and what they need to do in order to address it. Matt, your uh, talk, or at least one of your key talks at Compliance Week 2022 is entitled Keynote Fireside Chat, The Human Factor of ESG, and it's moderated by my good friend and fellow Texas Longhorn Forrest Deegan, but you're going to talk about uh, how not only uh, modern slavery and human trafficking works into ESG, but really a much broader remit on the human factor. Could you give us a, a couple of uh, teasers or previews of uh, what you hope to communicate there? Well, a lot of people know human trafficking from the little articles that they read. You know, they they get a little snippet of what it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by talking about some cases, some real life cases related to sex trafficking, uh, forced labor on fishing boats, forced labor that is related to sweatshops, talk about the trends, and then focus on why this particular issue all of a sudden is so relevant to the private sector. You know, what were the factors related to legislation and lawsuits and media coverage and ESG? And then go into some specifics about what is it that you as compliance people need to understand related to this topic so that as you do your work, you can kind of figure that into it. So, Matt, I've had the privilege of um, uh, hearing you speak, I think, as long ago as 2015 or 2016, and your message around uh, modern slavery and human trafficking has been consistent, but it seems to me that either the marketplace, the corporate world, or the private sector has caught up to you. And uh, that your last remarks really uh, crystallized what I wanted to ask you, which is why talk to inside or rather uh, compliance officers who obviously are concerned about this, but more importantly, why is it so important that this message be brought to the corporate world and the private sector now? Have we finally caught up to where people like you were several years ago? Has the market evolved? Is it a confluence of factors that you mentioned, such as legislation, such as social media, such as much more uh, worldwide concern and care? Are, Are we at an inflection point from the things you've been talking about, frankly, for quite some time? Yeah, I think we have reached reached a critical point where the legislation, which continues to kind of expand and grow, the German legislation that's coming out that affects most major businesses, says not only do you have to describe what you're doing to address this issue, 
But if you get caught with modern slavery in your supply chains, you're going to be fined and penalized. That's kind of a new area. The other thing with ESG being such a prominent force of nature these days, post-COVID, where it's not just about business for profit, prestige, and growth, you have to demonstrate that you're a business that cares. Um, S has within it modern slavery. And there are a certain number of indicators that have to be addressed related to this. And so not only in the investors looking at this, but consumers and other businesses are looking at this as well. So you rightly pointed out, there's kind of an evolution of change that has taken over uh, time. And where we are now is it's almost a critical point where there are just so many factors that are leading to this is an important topic. It's a relevant topic. It's a topic that's not going to go away. And businesses need to understand this in order to move forward. Matt, you uh, have in the past and continue to work with many corporations on this issue. Uh, do you find that uh, institutional investors who talk about ESG, certainly in the context of the E of climate change or uh, carbon reduction on that sort of thing, are as focused or focused on the S part uh, around the areas that you talk about to help drive a business response to modern slavery and uh, human trafficking within the overall ESG framework? Well, that's been the trend in the past, but this is changing. And let me give you a concrete example. If you're an electric car company, you're getting a lot of points in E for basically uh, kind of reducing carbon emissions and so forth. But on the S side, your batteries come from Congo, where they have lithium and uh, cobalt that is mined in forced labor type circumstances. So what we're beginning to see is the analysts are weighing the difference between what you get with E and what you lose with S. So in the past, that wasn't relevant because people weren't paying much attention to it. But as more people say, all three of these letters have to be treated exactly the same, you're going to see much more emphasis on the S and much more emphasis on modern slavery being added to the equation for investors and consumers. Matt, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time for this episode, but I was wondering if our listeners wanted any more information on yourself, the work you do in uh, fighting the international scourge of human trafficking, or uh, more information on your organization, what would be the best place for them to go? Well, they can go directly to our website, the, the Mekong Club. Uh, it's on uh, kind of the internet, or they can send an email directly to me, Matt Friedman, at the Club dot org. Well, Matt, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, and I greatly look forward to your presentation at Compliance Week 2022. Very good. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to me. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you will plan to join me and Matt Friedman at Compliance Week 2022. Matt is a dynamic speaker. He's been talking about these issues literally as long as anyone else for the past 30 years, and it's an important issue. When you couple Matt with Forrest Deegan, you have one of the most dynamic panels that is going to occur at Compliance Week. I've linked in the show notes to information about registration, and of course, there's a discount code for listeners to this podcast. This is Tom Fox, and I look forward to visiting with you again and seeing you at Compliance Week 2022.